same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and he drank some of it and he passed it around to his disciples. And when he had given thanks, they all drank from it and he said to them, this is my blood, which is the new covenant and is shed for many. As we know, this was the Last Supper. It was actually the celebration of the Passover. The disciples had all got together to have a Passover dinner with the Lamb of God. And, G and Jesus told Judas to, to go and do what he had to do, to set up the betrayal in the Garden of Gethsemane. So Judas went off and he did it. So Jesus told Judas to go do it. So after this, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane and some soldiers came while Jesus was praying. It says that he was praying so hard that the that the blood that dropped from his head or the, the, the sweat that dropped from his head was like blood. And he was praying so hard. And one of the soldiers that was walking up to Jesus, one of the disciples went up to him with the sword and chopped off his ear. And Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. He knew he was going to be betrayed and he knew he was going to be crucified. And he knew he was going to, what was going to happen to him with Pontius Pilate and with all the whipping and the beating and, and he knew what was going to happen. But instead, instead of, instead of laughing about Caiaphas getting his ear chopped off, he, he had compassion on Caiaphas and he, and he picked up the ear of Caiaphas and he put it back on him and instantly it was healed and it was rejoined back to his body. And uh, he said to the disciples, he, he, he said, allow even this. Okay. He said, allow even this. So Jesus was betrayed and, and, and he was taken into custody and brought where they were to the, to the palace where, or to the, to the court in, in front of Pontius Pilate, where they whipped and they beat him and they beat him and, they, and usually they don't beat people so bad when they're gonna, when they're about to carry the cross because they knew they had to carry the cross to the hill where they would hoist the just the crossbar up on top of the um up on top of the cross and and, and hang him up there and uh so they didn't want to beat him so bad because they knew he had to carry this wood this piece of wood all the way to the hill but but they did they, they beat Jesus really bad. It said that he was marred beyond any man. And it said that that you could hardly recognize him. And, and the, the blood was all over me. He was whipped and, and he, he was beaten. He was, he was bruised for our transgressions. He was, he was wounded for our iniquities. And he, the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by our, his stripes, we were healed. And so he carried the cross all the way to to the hill and, and, and they crucified and they put the, the nails in his hands and in his feet and as he hung there as he hung there he says he says father forgive them for they know not what they do and he died on that cross on good friday he died there but before he died he said father into you into your hands i commend my spirit and all of our sins and that second on that day were washed away he died for us so let's live for him and make him number one in our lives Today's message is entitled number one. That's right. It's number one. And you know, a lot of times in our lives as Christians, um, wives, let's just put it this way. Wives want their husbands to be, to, to treat them, uh, number one in their lives and, and, and wives want their husbands to, to treat them number one in their lives and to take care of the family and to make sure that they go to work every day and make sure that the, the house is paid for and then make sure that the, the bills are paid. And he, the wife wants the expects, the wife expects the husband to put her in number one and the kids in number one and, and, and a family in number one. Amen. 
Likewise, a husband expects his wife to treat him like number one and to treat the family like number one and do everything family orientated to, and keep 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 the family number one amen excluding god of course um god is always to be number one so uh this is what makes a marriage work and or relationship work uh, you know god is trying to prepare us throughout his word to have good lasting long lasting uh, thriving relationships so god is always trying to to prepare us to 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 love one another for a long-lasting relationship to to be kind to one another to be giving to one another and generous to one generous to one another for long-lasting relationships to be equally yoked to treat each other with respect to forgive one another to submit to one another and to and to put off petty arguments and differences throughout the Bible he tells us these things and he shows us the way of how to do these things so that we can have a long-lasting relationship with one another with our significant others with him the Lord our God we're obviously we're supposed to submit to God but we are the bride of Christ the church today is considered the bride of Christ so you are the bride of Christ and according to Matthew 633 it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you so number one, number one, Jesus says, he's showing us the way and he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So what we want to do is we want to follow after what Jesus is telling us to do. We want to seek first the kingdom of God. Um, he is the light. Jesus is the light and he claims to be the light so many times in the word and he is going to shine on our path, right? He's going to show us the way. And so what he did is he came to earth and he led the way amen he's showing us how to seek first the kingdom of god so this is what he was doing in the bible okay he was going around and he was bringing the disciples when he's on his way to the cross he was getting his disciples up and he was going around and he was telling the disciples one step at a time how to seek the kingdom of God, how to be his disciple, how to put him number one, how to, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that all these things would be added. So disciple means student or follower of a certain teaching. So what he was doing, he was going around, he was getting up all of his disciples, he was, he was taking his disciples, he was working miracles, he was doing all these things for you and me so that he could show us, he wanted to show us how to follow him, amen? He was doing it all for us. So, so Jesus was teaching his disciples throughout Galilee and he went to get his, his disciples and, and bring his disciples with him to the cross on his journey to the cross to show us how to be his disciple to show us how to be his follower and he told us a great many things and one time they were sitting around a table the disciples and Jesus were sitting around the table and they were arguing with one another just uh, arguing which commandment was the greatest of them all and Jesus said the greatest commandment of all of these is love amen it's love so what he wants us to do is he wants us to to when we're doing the things for God that we do when we when we're helping one another when we're loving one another when we're giving to one another when we're being equally yoked to one another when we're we're putting off petty arguments of differences when we're helping one another who are in need and so on and so forth we want to do that out of love we want to do it because we want to do it because if we don't do it because we want to it doesn't mean anything that's what God wants us to do he wants to do everything for him out of love amen God is love but why do you call me Lord Lord and not do the things which I say. Whosoever comes to me and hears me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom they are like. He is like a man who's building a house, who's dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat violently against the house, it could not shake it for it was built on the foundation of a rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like the man who built a house on the sand without a foundation against which the stream beat violently and immediately it fell. 
and the ruin of the house was great. You see, God wants us to follow him and he wants us to build our house. He wants us to make him number one in our life. If you knew that all other ground was sinking sand, why would you stand there? Why would you stand in the sinking sand? But if you knew that only the solid ground was Jesus Christ, that's where he wants you to stand. And that's where he wants you to be. He's saying, be wise, dig deep, build your foundation on me, build your foundation on Christ, build your foundation on the solid rock that would never, never crumble. Not when the storm comes, not when the floods come, not when the waves come, not when the rain come, not, not when troubles and trials and tribulations come, but build your house on the rock of Jesus Christ. So many times we've tried, we've tried to do things our own way and we've tried to do things without God and we've tried to do things and, and have our own dreams about our own ways and our own things and our own ways and the thing that we want and that, that isn't even, has nothing to do with God. And, 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 and most of the time it fails and we build everything on the, on, on the sand, on the sand, we build everything in. And I'm just going to tell you that most things, everything in this world is temporary. Everything in this world, in your relationships, you're going to have relationships your husbands and wives they may pass away from you uh, your mother and your father they may pass away from you uh, your friends and your families they may move on move away pass away even your dogs and your cats may run away they may they may just run out the door and just never come back and you have to understand this even your children are gonna pack up and move away and get married and start families of their own someday everything in this world is temporary and it's gonna be gone amen Hebrews 13 5 says I will never leave you or forsake you so God is trying to tell us that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us he he is the solid rock that he wants us to build our lives on and that he wants us to follow his ways and he wants us to do the things that he wants uh, th th that he wants us to do and he wants us to and to live our lives for him and he wants us to make him number one just like God has made the church number one and just like the church has made God number one in our lives just like a husband makes a wife number one in their lives just like a wife makes her husband number one in their life and just like a husband and wife make their family number one in their life amen God wants us to make him number one he's jealous for us and he wants us to make us him number one and he expects us to make him number one so what we need to do is we need to start building on the rock making him our number one and making him the most important thing in our life and following him and his ways because his ways are not our ways in our ways are not his ways amen my name is guy and we'll see you in the light